What's up, what's up, world? It's me, your girl, Angela. Making sure you get your ticket for the next event. Catch your second win. That's right. Catch your second win. You do not want to miss this. This is going to be the event of the year. See you at True by Hilton in Fort Lauderdale. We have a guest speaker, Joan Wrightgood, a coach, a mentor, an entrepreneur. You want to meet her as well as the awesome Apostle Sheila O'Brien. She's going to help you renew your mind. And we have one of the most powerful intercessor, Mary Lewis. Come out, you guys. You do not want to miss it again. We're going to be at True by Hilton in Fort Lauderdale. Can't wait to see you. Remember, and everything you do, always, always be true to you. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? Well, it's me, your girl, Angela. How are you doing today? I want to thank you guys for joining us. When you see this broadcast, please do me a favor, comment, like, and share. Share so that we can make sure that this conversation go abroad. Now, today, I don't know if you know this, but I have one of my friend girls, my girlfriend. She don't like for me to call her my um, spiritual sister because she want to be my friend too. But my friend, um, Patricia! Griffith. So we're going to talk about um, marriage. We're going to talk about this thing, marriage. First of all, hey, Trisha. Hey, Angie. How are you doing today? I'm great. Talk to the people. Tell the people who you are. Introduce yourself to the people. Patricia. Uh-uh, uh-uh. We got, people got to hear you. Patricia. Well, Pat. Trisha to her. Uh, what is your love? Just, you know, this is Trisha. I think they know me. I'm me. Yeah. And then you'll find out the real me, more of me on tonight. Yeah, this is right. We're going to find out about Trisha. Not only Trisha, we're just going to find, we're going to have this conversation that I see that's going around a lot about people as far as marriage. It's hard to get married these days. People don't want to be married these days. I even hear people saying that marriage, marriage is not in the Bible. I don't know where they get that from because the day I studied and I saw that there is literally at least 12 scriptures that's talking to you about marriage. So we're going to have that conversation um, today as well. So uh, Trisha and I both are, have been married twice, right? Your first marriage, you was married how long? 23 years. Wow. How, how old were you guys when you met? I was 19. He's four. He was four years older than me. Yeah. And then you 23 years and then not uh, that came to end. My first marriage, I was well, I was with him for six months, but I was, you know, I stayed married for three and a half years. And um, I, I've now been married for 26 years. And now you're married and you've been married for how long? A year. One year. Oh, you well, missed. Is it a year? Yeah, it's over a year. You're over a year. We counting the first time we did. Oh, what had happened was. We counted five about- years. Or Technically, I was married to him before we got divorced and then we remarried. So. Oh. Okay, that that would have been five years, but we've been married the second time only one year. Okay, see, that, you're all over, over a year. Okay, that's something to talk about because uh, 
you um so you've been married three times technically <laughs> twice <laughs> twice twice to the same person <laughs> technically to the same person two times two times okay yeah, so we're times. gonna say we've been married two times we married a few times yeah but this is it yeah this is it yeah yeah i said that too i said when i married Woody that this was going to be my last um and in a last marriage i wasn't going to do it again but i want to talk about how you can't look at um your marriage and, and mirror it with anybody else's right you have to make a relationship you have to make it work for yourself and everybody is different uh but i see that marriage have taken on a different look in today's as in in today's world would you agree with me yes i would agree people don't value marriage the way that we that they should value marriage marriage is sacred it's something that should be done i mean i don't want to make people feel like because they're not married they're not living right but technically the bible says that we should be have our own the bible drink out your own sister and the males drink out your own sister so mm -hmm. we should be equally yoked with a person mm -hmm. of the opposite sex. Yeah. And um, when I talk, when I think about marriage, you know, if you look biblical, a lot of people got married biblical because it was like a business transaction, right? When you got married back in the days, you got married because um, royalty, as far as we wanted to keep the title going, we wanted to keep the bloodline clean. Um, you, you got married, you gave a diary, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is what, um, marriage, how marriage was um, operated in, in the days. Now, I see a lot of people not wanting to get married, but they're, they're, they're um, living together. They're um, um, having uh, babies more. So I had baby out of wedlock. So don't think I'm judging you. I had three babies out of uh, wedlock, but what I'm saying is more prominent to happen now. Do you think people don't want to be married? Or do you think they, they, the opportunity has never presented itself for them to be married? Because like people say they don't want to be married, but we were built to be that way. Like we were built to be connected to someone in marriage. Yeah, we were. I, I thought so. Now, here's the thing. I believe in the Bible from the beginning to the end. So I do believe that marriage is ordained um, by husband. I mean, by God, I do believe that marriage is something that God ordained. I do believe that God made men and women for one another. But uh, I find that a lot of Christians are not um, heeding to um, not having sex outside of marriage or um, being committed to one person. And I hear a lot of people saying that they don't have to be married and live for God. Mm. I feel sorry for them. Because you do. The Bible don't lie. From Genesis to Revelation is what it is. We need to be married. I'm not judging anybody if they're not married because I've had fornicate, fornicated. I've had relationships outside of being married. I've been married for a long time to the first person and the second person. So it's difficult to say that you're not supposed to be married. To me. Because I believe in that. I yeah. believe in marriage. I mean, we make mistakes all the time, but I think that people, women especially who don't, who say they don't want to be married, it may be because the opportunity is never presented themselves. And so we, we, we tend to deflect something to make us feel like we don't want it. I don't know how to explain, how to explain that. Like, no, I don't really want it. I don't want it. I don't want it because it's never been presented to me. But mm -hmm. if it was presented to me, would I say yes? Yeah. You understand what I'm trying to say? Like, you know, I would never work at this system. It's because that job is never been, you never applied or you applied and you won't get the job. Mm -hmm. So not sure you won't do it, but if you ever got the job, would you take the job? Mm -hmm. That makes sense what I'm trying to say. Yeah, it makes sense. But um, I, I don't know if it's the cost, the way the world view things now, as far as we're so don't judge me. I can live my life however I want to. I'm free to do, do what I want. And I don't know, it's because back in the days, let's bring it into my days as far as my mom days in the 40s and the 50s, women had to get married to have a voice, right? If you was not married, you couldn't buy a house. Even when, and when you was married, you couldn't even say whether or not you wanted to get your tubes tied or whether or not you well, wanted to terminate a baby. It's even now though, you, if you're married, then you can't do it without your spouse but like now single, you can, you, can. Yeah. you can buy a house without a man um you can have a job um you can have your Pretty own business you can do everything so i'm wondering is it because of that 
that marriage uh, is not looked at as honored or value or feel like it's necessary. Hmm. I mean, speaking from some, speaking on the side that when I was not married, I can't provide for myself. I'm able and capable of taking care of me. But biblically, I'm supposed to have a husband to provide for me. I'm supposed to be his 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 rib. Yeah, sure. I'm supposed to be his help me, right? Yeah. So if he do fall on times, then I am supposed to be there to pick him up and to uplift him and to carry him on. I think a lot of times we find a lot of, how do I say, men have... Uh, so we as we as women have children, mm -hmm. and then we have kids. We have women, and we have boys, and we have girls. But with the girls, we tell our girls what when they're little. Oh my God, you're so pretty, you're so pretty. And then we don't do that with the men. So it makes it harder when men get older who have never been validated by their mom than to find. So that's why they saying it's hard to find a man to marry because uh, they need validation all the time, and most of us don't want to do that all the time. But being a wife is not something that you're going to wake up in the morning. I'm a wife, and it's just simple like that. Every marriage has to go through something. It may not be adultery. Mm -hmm. It may be him not working. Mm -hmm. It may be him drinking. I mean, it could be anything, but everybody has to go through something. My marriage is not the same as your marriage. Right. right. What you're going through, I might can't go through. And what I'm going through, you might can't go through, because we all have to wear our own size shoes. We may wear the same 10, mm -hmm. but it's not the same 10. Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to look at it a little more, a little different as to marriage. Define marriage to, to them and see if it's something they're willing to do. I don't know it's difficult to me to say, because I, I enjoy being married. Me too. And uh, even though we hear people all the time, marriage is so hard. It is just so hard to get married, uh, to be married. It's such a job. And then you hear people say, well, I don't want my marriage to be a job. I don't want it to be hard, but anything worth having, it takes some work. You got to work at it. You got to work at it daily. But I will say that to me, marriage is worth working for. But it all depends on who you're married to as well. You got to make sure you're married to the right person as well. Oh, that's another topic. Because mm -hmm. we get married. Um, so when I married the second guy, well, the third guy, it's the same <laughs> second guy. guy. <laughs> He the same guy. Uh -huh. So when I originally married, um, I mean, Freddie, Freddie and I originally got married the first time. Um, I had just been divorced for maybe two or three years. And he did something that triggered me. And I just shot out of there. Phew, ran. So even though I knew that. So when you was, say you shot out of there, you saying, what do you mean you ran? Me? I just, I just yeah. couldn't. I was like, uh-uh, I can't. I'm not doing this again. I did this this year. In the, in the other marriage, I didn't want to go through that again. Not even giving... We don't even give God time to repair and to fix. We just like want to put in the microwave, fix him in two minutes and then be done with it. Mm -hmm. But the problem that we, I find is that talking to a lot of people that, I, that I've spoken to about marriage, that we don't pray for us ourselves. I'm having a problem with Freddie. I can't be like, oh, God, please, Lord, Jesus, fix Freddie. I, didn't know, I need to ask God to help me with whatever is in me. That's causing an issue because it takes two of us, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not Freddie's issue. It's I have a problem too. So what is my problem? So I have to ask God to show me me so I can repair me, fix me. And when fixing me, it should fix the situation. situation. But most people don't do that. Most women immediately, go, or people, period, we immediately go and pray for the other person. Mm -hmm. Even if it's the kids, what we always say, oh, Lord, please fix da 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 But think about it. How have you been treating him? Uh, have you shown him that you are his help me? Have mm -hmm. you shown that you have his back or are you just there yeah. for what he can do for you? Well, that's, an, that's another thing too. If you go back to people not being married today, excuse me, because we feel like I can do for myself. So <clears throat> I don't have to tolerate um, anything. I don't have to work out anything. I don't have to um, learn to navigate their issues or, or, or how to pair our issues together or bridge our life together because I can have my own life. I can afford to have my own car. I can afford to pay for my own place. So why should I put up with anything that you're, you're dishing that I don't want to? I find you know, when I look back on life relationships when I was growing up and, you know, whether it be auntie, uncles or even my mother and father, I find in those days that a lot of women stayed married because 
they had to, whether it for uh, probation, whether because they had children and they felt like they should stay married to their husband. Uh, or whether it was fear, whether it's because they didn't have a voice of their own because a lot of women did not have a voice. They felt like they had to tolerate things, right? So you said that when you went through your first issues, the serious issue with Freddie, you ran. Okay, those you had that issue before in your first marriage, but you stayed. Is it because you, was, you wasn't able to stand for yourself or did you not hear a voice? Here to have your own voice, or did you were you not able to provide for yourself financially? What was the difference that made you stay then, but you ran before afterwards? So the first time um, I stayed because I believed in marriage, and whatever issue that him and I had, I thought that we would be I would be able to get past it and work through it. It didn't really get bad until like the ending part of the marriage. Like, wait a minute, bro. <laughs> This is too much. And so that's what they say. Yeah, you know what? I can do this. I'm just going to go. And I had small kids. So um, I did wait till my kids got older before I um, I believed in my kids being in the house with their dad. And it's not like he was disrespectful or calling me out my name. It's just he had an affair. He had a baby. Um, I took the baby in as my own kid, but that wasn't the issue. Our issue was more so of him and his insecurities that caused me to go eventually go so with freddie when i got married to freddie it wasn't freddie wasn't doing any of that it's just i looked like something you know how you see something it looked like something that you like hey look this look familiar to yeah. me i don't yeah. know if i want to even i'm not even gonna allow it to show yeah up so look like something and then come to find out it was not even what i thought i just looked at it and I'm, so after that the lord had told me don't make haste it was late because i had already made haste Right. So I'm able to talk about not making haste. We have to really allow God to fix. If you want it, it's nobody's business, but your own business. I mean, who have you tell, but you have to let God do it for you. He will do it in his time, though. You just can't rush God because when he, you're going through that, he has to fix something in you. So while he's fixing that in me, guess what? He's fixing the whole thing. So there must have been something in me that made me go, mm -mm, no, no, don't do this, and took off running. I mean, I ran pretty fast too. I, I hear two key things you're saying as far well as you know, you can't make, you can't make haste. You have to be patient. I mean, we're talking biblical. We're talking about those that love the Lord. We're talking about those that say Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. We're talking about those that says that um, they live for Christ. So we believe in the Bible from the beginning to the end. If you believe in the Bible from the beginning to end, and not saying that marriage is perfect, even when God has called a marriage, you're going to still go through struggle. Trust me, I feel like God ordained Woody and I to be together. And though through these 26 years that we've been together, there have been issues, right? And so say that you are speaking to a woman that's been married and their husband um, had a, woman, a baby out of wedlock, had a baby on them. How did you stand there? How did you? How was you able to stay there? And not that you can tell anybody what to do, but if you can share something with them as well as a word of encouragement or something, what would you do? I mean, for me, it was different because I'm, I'm believing in God for me. So I asked God to remove all that malice, all the pain I was, I had felt, and to allow me to be with my fam, my family to be together and to raise my kids in one house. And I never, I forgave Paul and we never got, I got past that. So forgiveness for me is the key. If you truly forgiven a person for whatever it is, whether he's, no matter what it is he's doing or whatever, whatever happened in the relationship, if you forgive him, completely forgive him, you can move past that. And God can do it. Mm -hmm. I know he can do it because he did it for me. Mm -hmm. Not the first time, but the first and the second time yeah. he did it for me. Cause I ended up back with the same person that I, that I had walked away from. So, I mean, you have to just believe that God can do it. And I just believe it just by saying, oh, I believe God can do it. You have to walk in your belief. So you believe it, you got to still go forward. You can't come back. You can't talk negative. You can't think negative. I mean, it's hard to do that. But you have to say God can do it. And you have to still speak positive into your life or speak positive affirmation into his life and just move forward. Yeah. Move, moving forward is the key that we can't stay there because... 
like you said earlier, when you go to God and pray for in prayer, we can't go to the God and always talk about our partners. We have to. I remember when I first married Woody and I could only reflect on me when I was married Woody, because when I was married, my first husband, I wasn't trying to live for God. I was not. Um, um, doing things in decent in order. I was not doing things according to how the Bible say doing it. And, and I can say, you know, I just, I, I wasn't, I wasn't doing Jesus. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't doing Jesus. But anyway, with Woody, you had to do things different. But it reminded me of when I, my first marriage, right? As far as my first husband, um, you know, you know, I hate to say things because I'm not trying to I'm um, pulling that down. My husband, my first husband didn't work right that often. He, when we first got together, we, we was together. He wasn't a worker. Um, he works now. He have a hard job, work hard. But nevertheless, when he was not a worker. So when Woody went through those hard times um, that he was without working. Right. All I thought is, oh, now he want me to take care of him. Oh, now um, he he ain't gonna go to work because he feel like I make I make money. So what I was doing now is I'm 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 comparing him to someone that they are two totally different people. Mm -hmm. And I think what we do sometimes is we we um, we are so busy holding on to our hurt, our trauma that we don't allow the person that's in our life. Um, fair game. We don't give them the, the clean slate that they deserve because we're still trying to hold them accountable to something that someone else did. I agree. That's what happened with me the first time um, Freddie and I got married. I immediately put him in the same place that the first husband was in because I'm like, this looks like something I've already seen. Mm -hmm. I don't watch this movie before and I don't like how it's going to end. I don't like the ending. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my you know, cut the movie short uh -huh. and go. Yeah. But um, it's funny because I, we got divorced the first time and I was driving not right after we got divorced because we got divorced and we went to court together. He picked me up. He took me to court. We got divorced and we left court together. We to eat after that. You remember yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. So um, after that, but it was like after a little while after that, I'm driving to work one day um, and I could hear the Lord say, Freddie is your husband. I was like in the car. Freddie, did I just? I just. Did you just, just allow. Uh, see, God, will, He'll let you, mm -hmm. let you do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna come. It's gonna come all right full, back, circle. full circle. So had I just allowed? Had I prayed about it? That's the problem. I saw it. I didn't even ask God nothing. I didn't say God is this right. Nothing. I just said goodbye, mm -hmm. and that was the end of that. This time around, I heard God say that. The second time, I said, He said it again. So then I called my pastor and said, uh-uh. <laughs> I think I made an error. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And it's hard because I really want to do what God want me to do. And sometimes it can get difficult mm -hmm. to, want to do what he wants you to do because you're like, yeah. So your flesh starts saying, yeah, but I feel like. And so we got married a second time and it was different because I, my first trauma that I had, I no longer hold on to that trauma. There's nothing that my first husband can offer me that I don't have with my second, that I don't have with my second husband. Mm -hmm. um, I don't compare them to be the same. I don't compare them at all. They're not the same people. Um, I enjoy being married to Freddie. Um, so now I don't compare them like I did the first time me and Freddie got married. Cause it, but it was difficult because it was a hurt and I saw it before and I was, thought it would be the same thing, but it was totally different. So we don't communicate these things. That's another problem. If you see something and you don't say something, see it, you say it. So instead of me saying any, something, asking the question like, you assume. was that? Mm -hmm. did, did It just was like, yeah, I just assumed it was what I thought it was. And mm -hmm. kind of find out it wasn't what I thought it was. Mm -hmm. It was completely um different. I was going to say, um, now, I was there when you first met Freddie. <laughs> And um, I remember uh, Freddie has, can I say, have kids and they're young kids and your kids are grown. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember someone saying that uh, they wouldn't be called to raise kids. Right. You remember that person? Yeah, remember that person. <laughs> I was just saying, <laughs> dog, why the Lord give me somebody with little, little kids. kids? Yeah. Okay. Little kids, but it's weird because those girls, um, 
it took a, it took a little minute for me to get it though. They were smaller when I first met them, and it took a minute for me to understand that I do have something inside of me that I can offer to them. Mm-hmm. So blended families are are great are actually great families because we are a blended family. My kids are older, um, and the baby girl is a uh, should be thirteen or fourteen 14? come January because. The other one just turned 15 in October. So those are the two babies that we have. So the last two. Yeah. And we get along perfectly fine. Like, like they mine. Yeah. You know, that's what I think we do too. Let's talk about blended family since we're talking about that. Uh, blended family is a must when, you know, knowing how to blend a family is a must when you have kids or they have kids. Come into my life, Woody had one, I had three, and they were um from one to seven. And so- you need to be able to have uh, that patient because if not one thing that I have found out, even just through living, if you're not careful, children can destroy marriage, you know? And so if, how would you tell someone to handle uh, that situation or how could you share a tip that will help someone with a blended family as far as they don't make haste or, they don't allow the enemy to use the children to draw a wedge between the kids as well as the mother and father. I must just say prayer is so important. I'm going to keep saying that mm-hmm. because that's my foundation. If I don't, if I can't do anything else, that's all I know to do. And God will answer the prayer, but you have to pray and ask God to show you what your purpose is in that, like in that role, um, in the step mom role or step dad role, whatever your purpose is in that particular role. Like I had a lot to offer those girls. Um, and I didn't realize it until I started asking God, like, well, what I'm supposed to do? Polino, I think my baby was um, ninth grade, 10th yeah, grade. I think she, she was, was giving, I don't know, grade. she was driving, bank her own bank cars. So she was big. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't read, I'm like, man, I have to raise more kids. It's like it was difficult in the beginning. And then I realized that I had something to offer. So prayer helped me realize that. And God will show you, you, if you ask him, he'll show you exactly what you need to do. Did you have to distinguish, uh, like draw a line? Like in my house, I was a disciplined area. Woody didn't. He tried, but he really, he, it's just not in him. <laughs> I was like, if you're going to look like that or you feel like you're going to cry, don't beat him. I, I got, got it. it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. So Hello. Well, with my kids, I definitely was the uh, spanker. Uh-huh. Whoop. Teddy I was tear up. <laughs> tear right on right up. Right on up. Hence, very successful kids at this moment. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ain't been to jail or nothing, so they know I'm beaten. Uh-huh. Um, with uh, the girls, I just, it's punishment stuff. Like, when they were small, you'd be like, write lines. Mm-hmm. If I see one bully the other one, say, come here, write these lines. Say, I will not bully my sister. Um. Their dad can kind of look at them with that certain eye, and it's like, uh oh. So it's, you know, I never had to like really, um, do you have to do the They're discipline. really, they're, not, they're good kids. They mm-hmm. would come to find it was really good kids, mm-hmm. but you have to just talk to them mm-hmm. like any other kid. Like yeah. it's like they're your, like it's your kid. If you yeah. treat it like it's your kid, it won't be a problem. I have a, I now have a problem with, I hear, I heard one of my, um, associates say, um, her husband, kids, if they have to come live there, then there's no she can take that. I said, let me tell you something. You can take it. Mm-hmm. Just see what you need to, what you can offer to them. My mama say I was the one who did the punishment. Yes, mother, <laughs> you did it well. <laughs> but <laughs> we thank you. <laughs> we thank you for the love. I don't know. My mom said, um, it's Speaking about your mom, my mom will say this weird because I never got a spanking before. You need one. I don't. Okay. Thank you. So I never got a spanking and uh, she couldn't understand how would I spank my kids. I was like, like this. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this is how you spank them. Uh-huh. Don't be spanking those kids. Yeah, they need a spanking. Mm-hmm. I probably need this. I probably need a spanking. Yeah, you did. I mean, back I'm, then. I'm sh- no, not now. Because I ain't no spanking. I ain't now. no spanking now. Yeah, <laughs> no. Spanking me not. I'm 50. Yeah, not, not, not now. I, I remember. Did. I mean, I probably could have used a spanking yeah. too. I remember when my um, I, my dad and I uh, met Woody. Well, after he met Woody, after we was getting married and he knew we was getting married, my um, my dad told um, Woody, he was like, um, she spoiled. I should have whooped her a little more. But she grown now. 
Meaning, she too grown to be trying to whoop her. Don't play with her. And, and when you get through, if you don't want her, he said, you back. bring her right back where you got her from. Exactly. And I, and I think these are things that we need to talk to our young girls and young boys about as far as marriage and that, you know, marriage is a beautiful thing to have someone to um, be there with you, uh, to help you through your hard times, to enjoy life with. And I, I'm just trying to understand how the enemy has painted a picture that marriage is not necessary or that marriage is um, more so a business, um, a contract instead of someone, two people deciding to love and, and share their life with each other. I don't know, because I did a survey when I was in um, doing my, my degree, one of my degree, my first degree. It's weird. I did a survey. I think I talked to you about it before saying I was asking different women, um, did you love your husband when you first got married? Mm -hmm. So statistically, most women do not love their husbands when they get married. They're not, they love them. They're not in, in love. love with mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. um, and only because the Bible tells us we don't, the Bible does not say we have to love them. We have to respect them, but the respect that we give to them turns into love. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells the husband to love your wife like mm -hmm. Christ of the church. So if we can get past the fact that I don't, I don't know, I'm not in love. Mm -hmm. Because you love them enough, you sleep with them, mm -hmm. giving up your little good thing, mm -hmm. so, taking this money. Yep. So yeah. you should have to. I think there should be some type of line. Yeah, that's drawn between that. That's one of Woody's scripture that he loved. That uh, the Bible say, "Love the wife, husband. Love your wife as Christ loved the church that He gave Himself for it." Mm -hmm. And so when you give yourself for someone, that means you do everything and then some. For that person you you compromise um um you go without you um you sacrifice and i think today's world we find so many men not all they're looking for the same thing that we're looking for we're, they're looking for the security they're looking for the woman with the 800 score they're looking for the woman that make the money that the roles have changed but it the shouldn't be they are the men the man should be the provider. provider. I don't know whether you spoil or not. You, your husband, I, I don't believe in me and Freddie splitting the bills 50%. I, I, have a, I, I have issues. Not for everybody, though. Yeah. I, I feel like if you are the provider, you're the provider. Yeah. And if you can't provide anymore, then I, I help because I'm, I'm your wife. So I'm supposed to step in and then I'm now the provider until you can get back to the place you need to be to be their provider. Right, right. So you don't just provide financially, you provide you, pro you should provide spiritually. Mm -hmm. You should provide more emotionally. You should provide mentally. You should be there for it all. You know, if I'm up, I'm my down. If I'm on the side, I'm on the right, left, top, bottom. You need to be there to provide all of that. In return, you get what you need from me. Now, if this is why the Bible say, go. Oh, this is why the Bible say, I'm go ahead. This is why the Bible say. Uh, well, not the Bible, the vows is better health, um, sickness and health, Came better worth, all that. riches are poor because you're supposed to be there for all things. Everything. You know, it's not, not I'm married today. Oh, he can't provide. Oh, psh, he don't have no money. I'm leaving. No, you have to stick and stay. So people have been married 50 years. You think they've never had adultery or you think they never had the husband not provide or husband not work or anything ever, not, never, ever, ever, ever happen? Mm -hmm. They was married 50 years. You could be married two months if <laughs> something happened. Mm -hmm. So imagine. So in order for your marriage to get stronger, that's anything in life. In order for you to get stronger, you have to go, you gotta through, go through something. something. You so have to, you if have there's to go two worlds something. colliding into one world, then we have to go through something to make us a stronger world. Mm -hmm. Make us it should be a bond that can't be broken, though, mm -hmm. right? That's the ring when they when they pray over the ring you get married. Yeah, this that's a circle, circle. Mm -hmm. the circle that nobody should be able to break. It's you, God, and the spouse. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the true ring. It should really be. And I don't know if marriages that don't have crisis, a lot of trouble. Yeah, I, I, I in my opinion, though, this is my opinion. I think that. Yeah, and let me just do this. Uh, um, we we're not specialists. We we're not marriage counseling. We're not therapists. We're just talking as far as um, two girlfriends sitting and chilling, talking about what we see. Um, in the world, things that we see posted as far as, you know, marriage and uh, giving marriage a bad name or just even to the point as for things that people feel like you should endure in your marriage. Um, even some people stay in marriage, whether they're being uh, 
uh, uh, cheated on, being abused or uh, mistreated because they believe that divorce is a sin. I, I'm those I'm I've been divorced and I believe that um, God want me to be happy as well. But I do believe that I'm supposed to have a reason um, to divorce my husband, not just because I'm tired of him, not just because he's tired of me, but... Um, well, the Bible talks about that. The Bible yeah. talks about um, adultery and if he was a non-believer, you, know, yeah. you have permission. Mm -hmm. I mean, God does not like divorce, mm -hmm. but he knows. Yeah. He still loves you <laughs> regardless. Yeah. He still loves you of the situation that you've been in. But again, we don't pray enough to ask God to help us with the things that we are dealing with. Um, and I think that's what we need to do more of. Well, I need to do more of anyway. Uh, my sister, uh, not to cut you off, but uh, 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 Apostle Sheila is the apostle and her, the pastor, and her, she wrote this whole description, which is a great one. Ephesians 5, 3 and 3, mm. Paul said, let the wife see um, that she respect her husband. When you respect your husband, you notice him regardless Regard him, honor him, prefer him, esteem him. It means value his opinion. Exactly. Admire his wisdom and his character. Appreciate the comment. Appreciating his comments to you and consider his needs and value. Exactly. That is a good one. But people don't want to do that. They want to be one-sided. I want you to respect me, but I'm not going to respect you. I think the main problem is Women don't want to be told. You hear that? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me what to do. I'm grown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That ain't that ain't that true. ain't true. I, I'm I'm sure Apostle go find a scripture that say that I don't know the scripture, but it say uh my body is your, your body, body, your body, 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 body. Okay, uh -huh. yeah, so, we belong to each other. Exactly, and you so. have to submit to one another. So yes, exactly. I I can't tell you what to do. I, I'm good at that. I'd be like, you ain't my boss, Woody. But I know he, he is you know my he boss. Is your boss. <laughs> That's me telling yeah. friend. You the boss. You say yes, I am. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, you audible. Yeah, and no, okay, so yeah. in that case, I won't do it. Yeah. And it's nothing. I think that submission is key, and it's to me, my own personal opinion. Submission is not a weakness. Mm -hmm. It's a. It strength. takes a strength mm -hmm. to be submissive to anybody, mm -hmm. to the police, to your boss, to your especially to your spouse. Mm -hmm. When you feel like he tell you the wrong thing in your mind, you like this ain't even the right thing. I'm gonna do it anyway. Saying the, right, <laughs> the right thing, but then you got to go back to God and say, See, God, this man, you <laughs> you see this, mm -hmm. so let God fix it. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, that's the problem. The problem is that we women don't want to let go. No, they, I'm he's not my boss, and I'm gonna do you I'm ain't the boss of me. You won't tell me what to do. And I, I do that, but I don't, I don't, I don't do that. I say that to Freddie all the time, like, he ain't my boss. He's like, Girl, yes, I am. Okay. And then we just carry on. But yeah. I know if he say no, it, it, it's, it's no. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. definitely no. Right. Like, you know, like I, um, my my husband really just let me have my way. But instead, if he ever say, no, Not I don't want you to do that, which he always say when I be telling him that I want to time and tuck, his answer is no. So he say <laughs> what he mean and mean what he say. But other than that, he do try to do his best to give himself to me. Uh, I was going to say something to you, but something made me excited. That made me excited. Apostle Scripture made me really excited. Um, and that when we're husband and wife, not only is we thank you, Holy Ghost. Not only do we submit to them, but they do to us too, because it's to one another. Mm -hmm. And I think we get a twist because some sometimes they try to throw that down your throat and make you feel like I'm your boss. I own you. You do what I say. It's not a dictat dictatorship. No. And see, that's what make people. Uh, uh, most women not like that word, um, but like you say, when you do that, um, it you do it hand to hand. And I think in that showing when we have to show ourselves, show our weakness, right? Because you feel weak, you feel vulnerable when you have to um, allow someone to tell you what you can or cannot do, or how they will appreciate if you do something or not do it. And so sometimes you feel like they're taking your power away. But if they love you properly, that yielding that power should end up it's easy. Yeah. And it should end up working out for your good. I have somebody that said to me one day, how you asking Freddie, can you do this? I said, see my, you the head. And it's going to flow from the top to the bottom. If he make a mistake, guess who God blame me? Him. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. so it's, it's on him. 
Yeah, I, yeah. I, Twenty six years, I still have a problem with that. Not that um, I don't let Woody know. I say stuff like, "You mind if I go to so and so?" I don't say, "Can I?" Oh yeah. I, say, I don't say that word, but I hear people say that word, and they get they they good with that. What you what you feel? Because you got to do what you think about. You got to do what's this. best for you. Yeah. I mean, you, can, you, you can word it. You don't. Yeah, have, I it, word it different. It don't have to be worded. Can I yeah. go? Yeah. It could be what you think about, or uh, I say I was thinking. How you do feel you have about something to do? this? Are you have something to do, so and so, and he, and he gonna tell me how you feel? But that's why because he had to drive you and stuff, so you probably have to I get. I appreciate you. Make sure he can find out he's free to take you yeah. that you don't have a way. Yeah. You know, made plans with no ride. What you gonna do is get out of my business. <laughs> you invited me in your business, sorry, <laughs> ma'am. So I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, but submission is key. Mm -hmm. I mean, submission is a big word. A lot of people don't want to. Um, people hear submission and get scared. Immediately are uh, angry, frightened. Yeah, like yeah. what? Mm -hmm. And it go, it go hand in the cousin, their first cousin obedience right there. So mm -hmm. they go together. Mm -hmm. So you can't be not submissive and obedient at the same time. Mm -hmm. You can only be both of them at the same time, submissive and uh, obedient. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. It's about being able to um, do what's best for one another. Because it's another scripture that say love is not boastful. boastful not, love does keep score. Love is not pride. Mm -hmm. And so when you love each other, you do those things. But the key is to make sure you can do marriage, honestly, if you're in love. But if you're doing marriage for anything besides love, to me, that Dang. becomes the struggle. Yes, it's And struggle. this is why people may not, I don't know, I don't know everybody in the world, but this is why people may not want to do marriage because if you're married marrying for money, that's only going to keep you for so long. If you're marrying out of uh, fear, that's only going to keep you for so long. Uh, so, you know, you need to have love to sus be sustained. So I think that um, if we allow the Lord, if we allow God to give us our mate, you could meet somebody in 30 days and be married. Yeah. It don't five take months. It don't take, married for 26 years. I'm telling you, it don't take uh, it don't take all that. If you heard the voice, you hear the voice of the Lord. If the, if the man hear the voice of God saying, because of course he's gonna talk to the man first. Mm -hmm. He ain't coming to tell me, Freddie, my mm -hmm. husband, if he ain't already told Freddie that mm -hmm. I'm his future. So mm -hmm. then when he told Freddie that, I hadn't heard that. Mm -hmm. I remember you saying that. I'm saying it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was God. <laughs> That what he told you. Uh, okay, well, I'm waiting. Yeah, <laughs> it's not necessarily him from the head to me. Mm -hmm. It's necessary for him to say it to the head. So yeah. if he said it to him, if we let him put us together, then we'll be different. It'll be different. Yeah, my sister. We find our own spouses sometimes and, become and propose to them too. What about that in the 2020? I ain't doing that. I've seen so many women propose to their husband literally. They all out of order. By, thank you. All buying, way out of order. Buying uh, rings, getting down on their knees. I think that we're so we're so to the point where don't judge me. I can do what I want to do. That we're so twisted that we don't value things. We have no order. Even in that, that's to me. If out of I, order. If you live by the word, it's just out of order. Mm -mm, I don't agree with that at yeah, all. We're not gonna ever be married. Mm -hmm. Somebody else can come along and marry me then, because mm -hmm. I'm not asking to be yeah, married not, to you. I'm not yeah, I'm not doing. That. I, I remember. I want to talk about this. Is your you married um Freddie twice? I I remember your first marriage to to Freddie. I remember the I, and just for lack of better words and 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 hate me later. You was really hard, right? You wasn't. You didn't show your emotions. You was very closed off. Although you said I do. This time around, I see your vulnerability. I see your softness i see you expressing yourself more was that hard <laughs> was that hard did that take something to get used to what broke in you growth um so when freddie and i was separated i was asked the lord to show me my errors the things that i had done wrong the first time um and he whoo, listen Listen, Linda. Man, he started showing me, and the thing that the uh, thing that uh, the Lord does with me is that not only does He show me, He allowed me to feel to see what it made Him feel like. So I had to go through episodes of things that um, I had maybe done to Freddie, not knowing I had done it to Freddie, mm -hmm. that how made him what it made him feel like. So I had to experience 
what he felt when I did these things that I didn't know I was doing, you know? So it's just growth. I allowed God to show me because I prayed and asked God, I'm like, I don't want to be married again. All these in and out of marriage, uh-uh. I want to find us. I don't need a husband. That's the it. I don't want to do it again. And so once I started asking to show me my, my faults or my errors, because what did I do? How did I end up in this place? If you said that he was, I was his wife, how did I end up in this place? Don't make haste. Mm -hmm. I made the mistake of running and not allowing him to um, repair it. And so me and my vulnerability now is different because I have to be open to allow him to know that I do care. I do love him and I want to be there with him. Not like before. Before, man, I was struggling with everything, changing my last names. I hadn't had, even though that was wrong, I had that last name for so long. I had it all my 20s, all my 30s, part of my 40s. I have nothing in my dad's name. So it was difficult for me to say, and that was something that bothered him. I'm um, not changing my name. And change your name, ladies. Change your name. Change the name because that that means a lot to it them. means a lot to when them. When they take on you, something, and that's another reason why people don't get married because they feel like taking their last name is giving ownership. But when you take on their last name, it's like you 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 come into the same world. And it is kind of good ownership. She, it meant not ownership. That's not the right word. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like it's she mine. I mean, that's yeah, in it. It's, it's like a it's like a dog a dog go pee in the spot. They want this my territory. It's mine. So your last name Griffin. That's because she my wife. <laughs> I, I remember when um, we went and signed our license thing because he knew my first marriage. My name was Angela Lewis Hyphen Lofton. Well, this time no hyphen. So I say my name was Angela Teresa Lewis Hyphen Lofton. So we went down and we filled our paperwork together and. I didn't even realize that Woody had signed my name, Angela Lewis Warren. Warren. <laughs> he dropped my Teresa since he because he knew my name was important to me, you know. So he dropped my middle name and made Lewis my middle name, but he was determined not to have a hyphen in my name, which is a good thing. Yeah, I think that um, I told my cousins before. I feel like if you're getting married, you hyphenate and you putting you setting yourself up for divorce right. or some type of. Uh, Separation, because right. that's what the hyphen means, and to me, that's what the hyphen meant. Yeah. So I never, I didn't hyphenate uh, it. It's, it's Griffin. That's good. That's good. Um, Maisha say sometimes we want to make them pay for past hurt because we don't want to let our guards down. Ooh, we don't want to let our guards down, man. But let me tell you something: true forgiveness of the first hurt means allowing yourself to get in position to feel that to get that hurt again. Mm -hmm. By the same person mm -hmm. or a new person, mm -hmm. but you have to let that let it down because you know it'll be happy. Mm -hmm. You're gonna walk around always tensed up, always thinking, "What if uh, they doing?" They, they, you don't want to live. You want to just live. Yeah. You know, so that's a that's a good one because we do walk around like that. I did that for a little while the first time we was married. You know, you said yeah. that already. I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, bro. Right. If I just keep this up, mm -hmm. then if just in case." Yeah. You only I won't feel so like long. so far. I'm gonna share this part, the not this, this part. part right? mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I mean, we, it's a lot. It was a lot that I had done wrong in the first marriage mm -hmm. that I that I've corrected um, with the help of the Lord. I've mm -hmm. corrected this time around. And every day, you're young, you're you're years, so every day is going to be uh, you're learning. Every although you guys have been married before, you back married this time. Every day we go through something, like you said, it's always going to be something, but you have to, um, and I get this from my husband, and I know y'all probably get tired of taking, talk about my husband, but I mean, he get on my nerves, but I'm telling you, God was good to me <laughs> when he allowed us to stay in this union. Um, what do you say that you have to make a choice, right? And he said he, he had chose and he had decided that he was only going to be married once and that he wasn't getting a divorce. I say that to say you have to decide. Every it's day. a choice. Every day, I choose to work on this marriage. I choose to, to be, be vulnerable. You. I choose you, right? I choose exactly. you. Every day, I choose you. Every day. Because at any point, I could not choose you. Right, you right. not choose me. You Correct. Every day, it has a choice. That it's a choice. Make. It's a choice you have to work on, too. Mm -hmm. This marriage has to be worked at. You need to pray. First thing, too, people get married don't have no spiritual counseling before getting married. Mm -hmm. So you never know if y'all need to be married or if now you go through more counseling sessions prior to getting married. 
and then we take counseling out of marriage once we get married. Mm-hmm. No, we need to eventually go back and do a checkup. Yeah, you have to every do every so often. Every so I often. Do a report card every now and again. So tell me what you think I'm doing wrong. What I'm, mm-hmm. How can I better myself mm-hmm. in the marriage? How can I better me? To better us or just uh, have no. someone to bounce off to because sometimes we think something is right or we think we're right about something we think we're doing something right and we be the yeah, whole problem no, we be the- so we just say that because mm. honey i'm ooh, that word yeah that's right. yeah but i thank god that i am um i'm pretty i'm pretty transparent i'm pretty open to people who i'm close to i can always god has given me a group of people i can actually call that love him, not everybody that can call, but those who I know can get that can pray. Mm-hmm. Or if I say, Angie, you know, I was thinking, she like, uh-uh, Trisha. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you are wrong. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'm, you know, it takes it takes me to be a mature saint too for me to understand that um when you say I'm wrong, mm-hmm. not to be offended when you mm-hmm. say, uh-uh, you wrong, and take that into consideration and use it. For the, the better, better. Mm-hmm. but you have you have to be mature. First of all, you got you can't be immature and being married, person. yeah. And you can't think that you always right. Yeah, I don't think I'm always right. I know I be right. I be constantly listening to this. You know, I know you going what you gonna say already, but I need to hear it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. this is what I'm thinking. And now, uh-uh. ah, yeah. <laughs> so it, you have to be mature. I, I'm, I'm thankful to God that I'm um that I've grown. Me the too. That I've grown. Yeah. Even in my rottenness. Awesome. Um, I've, and um, you even say writing, you writing you small and going. Okay, see, yeah. So, oh my God, it's already almost an album. This is when you call a real conversation with my friend girl. Um, just know that marriage is what you make it. Have you heard that before? Marriage is what you make it. What you put in is literally what you get out of it. And you can never ever um think your marriage is going to be like someone else. You can mirror off of some things. You could take some things from, you can learn things, some things from them, but even that you still have to take all the ingredients you get from somewhere else and make your own cake. <laughs> that was good. That's good. That was good. That was you good, have to take girl. ingredients from here and here and here and make your own cake. And in that you will make your own happiness. Um, I know that uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about, maybe we'll do it next time. I know back in the days, a lot of people got married that believe in Christ um, so they can have legal sex and not so much as because God has called them to be with that person because they, like you said, let God choose your um, mate for you. And then not that it's going to be perfect, but he'll work it out. We got a few um, commercials we want to share with you guys. Hold on a minute. No, not yet. We'll be right back. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up, world? It's me, your girl, Angela, making sure you get your ticket for the next event. Catch your second win. That's right. Catch your second win. You do not want to miss this. This is going to be the event of the year. See you at True by Hilton in Fort Lauderdale. We have a guest speaker, Joan Wrightgood, a coach, a mentor, an entrepreneur, You want to meet her as well as the awesome Apostle Sheila O'Brien. She's going to help you renew your mind. And we have one of the most powerful intercessor, Mary Lewis. Come out, you guys. You do not want to miss it again. We're going to be at True by Hilton in Fort Lauderdale. Can't wait to see you. Remember, in everything you do, always, always be true to you.
And again, just go to the website and make sure you click on it and donate. And I appreciate it. And I want to. Okay. So with that being said, you see that page right there, right there. Click be true to you and donate. Thank you. <laughs> okay. You guys, thank you, Trisha. Anything in the last words you want to say to the people? No. Well, I want to thank you for coming and being a guest on Be True to You um, talk show. This this was exactly what God wanted, I think. I think that someone would get something out of it as far as don't give up so easily. One, don't um, try to make your marriage off anybody else's. Every marriage is different. Two, you cannot do it without love. Three, um, God ordained marriage. And if he put you together, allow nothing and no one to um, take you asunder, separate you. Okay. Thank you so very much. This is your girl, Angela. Thank you for watching the Be True Show talk show. Oh, I'm sorry. Make sure you're here every Monday at 7 p.m. And remember, we're moving. We moved to the um, Be True to You talk show page. No more doing life with Angela. We moved to the Be True to talk show page. So make sure you share. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like. Make sure you share. Make sure you comment. Make sure you like. Again, we move to the Be True You Talk Show page. You can follow us on Instagram as well as YouTube. That's right, YouTube. Go over there, subscribe to our channel, share that one too, make a comment, and like it as well. Now, remember to make sure you get your ticket for the Catch a Second Win conference. Catch a Second Win conference, December 3rd. Tickets are only $50. You can cash out me at Angela Lewis Warren. Make sure you say for the Catch a Second Win event. Or you can zell at 954-298-0183. Again, 954-298-0183. You want to be there. We're only doing cash app a Zelle. We're going to have hot lunches. We're going to have giveaways. Not to mention we have some dynamic speakers you want to be a part of this. So I'm waiting on you to get your ticket. So with that being said, this is your girl, Angela, and everything you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> the producer want me to remind you that Monday, we're going to have a uh, Sabine um, on here. Be true to you. Be true to you is not about competing with one another. We're about competing.